Much like any professional sports league, the NHL is not without its imperfections. Commissioner Gary Bettman has had to grapple with the fact that NHL officials have made errors in the past, varying in seriousness from comical to infuriating for certain fan bases. Nevertheless, what remains universally disheartening for both fans and players alike is the experience of a game being lost, a series slipping away, or the Stanley Cup being seemingly stolen due to a crucial blown call. Today, we've assembled a list of the five most egregious blown calls in the history of the Stanley Cup playoffs. These calls triggered anger, bewilderment, and even changed the course of history for the teams affected by them. Let's get into it. In the electrifying atmosphere of Bridgestone Arena, where they had gone 9-1 in the playoffs, the underdog Nashville Predators found themselves in a must-win situation. They needed a victory to force a Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Final back in Pittsburgh. Early in the second period, with just 1 minute and 7 seconds gone, and the score still deadlocked at 0, the Predators seemed to have taken a 1-0 lead. Philip Forsberg fired a shot that slipped past Penguins goaltender Matt Murray and Preds forward Colton Sissons swiftly poked it into the open net. However, the referee, positioned in the far left corner of the offensive zone to Maurice Wright, was unable to see the play clearly due to the presence of Forsberg and Penguins defenseman Trevor Daly obstructing his view. Consequently, the referee blew the play dead, mistakenly believing that Murray had frozen the puck. About a half second before, Sissons celebrated what he thought was the game's opening goal. The game remained remained scoreless until Patrick Hornquist of the Penguins broke the deadlock with just a minute 35 left in the third period. Carl Hagelin sealed the Predators' fate with an empty net goal and the Penguins were crowned Stanley Cup champions. Following the game, the referee reportedly apologized to Sissons for his unfortunate mistake. But this major blown call is one Preds fans will never forget, and one that may have robbed them of their first ever Stanley Cup. The New York Islanders came into Game 6 against the Philadelphia Flyers holding a 3-2 series lead and the opportunity to become the second expansion team to capture the Stanley Cup. In the first period, with the score knotted at 1-1, Islanders forward Dwayne Sutter managed to beat goaltender Pete Peters after receiving a cross-ice pass from Butch Goring. This goal handed the Islanders a 2-1 lead with just 5 minutes and 52 seconds remaining in the period. However, However, upon reviewing the play, replay clearly showed that when Clark Gillies had entered the offensive zone and passed the puck back to Goring, the puck had actually exited the offensive zone into neutral ice. Goring then brought the puck back over the blue line, which is of course offside. However, linesman Leon Stickle did not call the offside, allowing the play to continue and Sutter scored. Although the Flyers managed to level the score twice, it was the Islanders who secured their first of four consecutive Stanley Cups with Bobby Nystrom's overtime goal, scored seven minutes and 11 seconds into the extra period. Following the game, Stickle admitted his mistake and faced criticism from fans every time he returned to Philadelphia. Since that series, the Flyers have only made it back to the finals four times and have failed to win a Stanley Cup. The Calgary Flames, on the verge of securing their second ever Stanley Cup in franchise history, believed they had taken a 3-2 lead against the Tampa Bay Lightning in Game 6 of the 2004 Final. This potentially game-changing moment occurred on a power play goal by forward Martin Jelena with just 6 minutes and 57 seconds left in regulation. Flames forward Oleg Saprikin surged up the ice with the puck and unleashed a shot at Tampa Bay's goalie Nikolai Habib. Bulin. The shot rebounded off Habibulin and struck the right skate of Jelena. The puck then redirected toward Habibulin and crossed the goal line before the goalie could kick it out of harm's way. Referees Bill McCreary and Stephen Walcom, however, did not witness the puck crossing the line and they did not opt for a video review. It wasn't until the next face-off that players and fans realized it was actually a goal, as a replay clearly showed the puck had indeed 
crossed the line. The game proceeded into overtime, where Martin San Louis notched the game winner just 33 seconds in, sending the series back to Tampa. The Lightning ultimately went on to secure their first ever Stanley Cup with a 2-1 victory in Game 7. It was later disclosed that referee Kerry Frazier, originally slated to officiate Game 6 in Calgary, had been replaced due to the negative reactions from Calgary fans over his calls during Game 4. But the damage had already been done. It was a turning point in the game that could have changed the series for the Flames. Now, over 20 years later, the Flames have yet to make it back to the Cup Finals. In 1993, the Toronto Maple Leafs stood at the brink of hockey greatness, with the opportunity to make a legit run at the Stanley Cup for the first time since 1967. However, that dream took an unexpected and infamous turn in what remains one of the most controversial incidents in franchise history. It all unfolded in Game 6 of the 1993 Western Conference Final, a moment etched in the memories of Leafs fans forever. Emotions ran high as the skates soared even higher when Wayne Gretzky, the shining star of the Los Angeles Kings, committed blatant high-sticking offense against Doug Gilmore, the heartbeat of the Maple Leafs. The violation was glaringly evident to everyone in the arena and those watching at home on their television screens. Despite the obvious high stick, which cut Gilmore's chin and drew blood, referee Kerry Frazier didn't call a penalty. Gretzky, the beneficiary of this uncalled penalty, went on to score a pivotal goal on the very next shift, which propelled the Kings to victory and forced a Game 7. The rest, as they say, is history. The Kings would beat the Leafs in Game 7 and advance to the Stanley Cup Final for the first time in their franchise's history, only to be defeated by the Montreal Canadiens in five games. For most Maple Leafs fans, that non-call proved to be the turning point of the series. Even today, they firmly believe that if the penalty had been called and Gretzky had been sent to the penalty box, the series' outcome would have been different. Some would say that this pivotal moment cost the franchise a shot at the Stanley Cup, a shot they've been chasing after for over 30 years since this moment. The 1993 season will forever be remembered as the season that held so much promise for the Maple Leafs but came crashing down after one terrible missed call. Dominic Hasek and Buffalo Sabres fans everywhere may carry the memory of this event with them for a lifetime. In the 1999 Stanley Cup Final, the Sabres had the chance to send the series back to Dallas for a decisive seventh game. Both Hasek and Stars netminder Eddie Belfour delivered outstanding performances that night, allowing only one goal each, forcing the game into a grueling third overtime. With just five minutes and nine seconds remaining in the third overtime, overtime period, Stars forward Brett Hall managed to position himself in front of the net. He received a pass from Yuri Letnin and made an initial shot that Hasek blocked. The rebounded puck left the crease momentarily, but Hull skillfully kicked it back to his stick and scored the game-winning goal. His teammates burst from the bench onto the ice in celebration. However, controversy ensued. When Hull's shot crossed the goal line, the toe of his left skate was inside the crease. At that time, the NHL Rule 78B stipulated that a player from the attacking side couldn't stand in the goal crease unless the puck was already there. If the player entered the crease before the puck and a goal was scored under such conditions, it should not have counted. Furthermore, if an attacking player physically interfered with the goalie before or during the goal, the goal would be disallowed, and a penalty for goalie interference would be imposed. The ensuing faceoff would occur in the neutral zone closest to the offense team's attacking zone. Referees Terry Gregson and Bill McCreary later argued that because Hull did not interfere with Hasek, his goal was allowed to stand under the existing rule, and the Dallas Stars were crowned Stanley Cup champions. This moment sparked outrage from Sabres players and fans and caused massive confusion around the league about the rule. The NHL would eliminate the rule in the following years due to the heavy blowback from the controversial call. However, for Buffalo fans, it was a 
moment that will haunt them forever. A blown call on a confusing rule that cost them a potential Stanley Cup championship. Since that series in 1999, the Buffalo Sabres have not been back to the Cup Final and have only made the playoffs six times. And there you have it, folks. Our list of the top five history-altering blown calls in Stanley Cup playoffs. Now, you'd think in today's age of advanced technology and numerous camera angles, one might assume that such errors would be a thing of the past. Yet, unfortunately, questionable decisions by officials still seem to haunt the game, leaving fans and players wondering when the next big blunder will cost their team a shot at greatness. Don't forget to show your support by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and turning on the notification bell for future updates. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section about what you think the worst blown call of all time is. See you in the next one.